All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. Here we grow again. Grateful to be back with you as always, and I am extra excited today to announce that over the next seven episodes, the next seven Monday and Friday episodes, not Wednesday, the Soul Share uh, episode days, I'm going to be reading my book, The Golden Key, Modern Alchemy to Unlock Infinite Abundance. And for those of you who aren't aware of the book, it is my 25 years of deep exploration, everything we talk about on the show sort of condensed into, you know, three, just over three hours to listen to, 100 pages to read, and my, you know, what I see as the the keys to alchemize and unlock infinite abundance in our life. And in an aim to, uh, in an effort to do that for myself, as I was, you know, setting out to uh, here we are, a fresh year. It's always an opportunity to reevaluate things. It's the beginning of 2022. And one of the things that occurred to me is, well, one, not only have I not read The Golden Key on Positive Head yet, but I haven't actually, for those of you who have read it or will hear me reading it here in the coming episodes, uh, I haven't done the game fully. <laughs> uh, honest moment, uh, transparent moment. I haven't done the game with the universe, the ritual action plan at the end of the book. I mean, I've done all of the exercises many, many times, but I haven't done them consecutively for 88 days, like I suggest doing at the end of the book. So in an effort to be more mindful in the new year and you know, walk the talk even more fully, I thought, you know what? Now's the time. Let's read the book. Let's uh, invite the listeners uh, who haven't heard the book, of course, to hear it, and then join me in the Golden Game Keymasters private Facebook group. I'd like to invite everyone participating, listening to this audiobook to join for free. And then at the end of reading, completing the book, which I will synchronistically finish on January 28th, 2022, one year to the day since I released the book, which was uh, January 28th, 2021. So I want to invite everyone between now and then to join the Facebook group. And you can find the link uh, in these show notes and, and all the you know show notes for the, the upcoming uh, parts of the book w- over the seven episodes. And j- yeah, just join up and then I'll let everyone in on the 28th and then we can uh, proceed to uh, participate in these uh, this ritual action plan that I put together and hold each other accountable and, and you know, inspire each other and share our own uh, types of abundance that we're looking to call in and, you know, any sort of inspirational things that have happened. And, you know, as you'll see, the, the um, over the 88 days, the, the different techniques and things that I share in the book, they're pretty easy and it's, a, it's literally a few minutes commitment a day. But, you know, over that time period, 88 days is, is not a short time period. So I want to I want to do it together, invite you guys to let's all be a part of it and support one another. If you're hearing this and it's, you know, um, episode three or part three, you can always go back and listen. Uh, just you'll see I'll label them each each one, part one, part two, part three, you know, seven total. Or you can go to goldenkey.gift.gift, use the code positive head and get the audio and or ebook. Uh, for free there as well with that code. And then you can listen at your own pace, but uh, hope to have a lot of you join in the Facebook group and let's just like support each other in calling in the maximum amount of abundance, unlocking the infinite abundance. That is our birthright. I am infinite abundance. I am that which I seek. And so are you. Hope you guys enjoy part three of the golden key, modern alchemy to unlock infinite abundance. The fourth key, align your intentions. All doubt, despair, and fear become insignificant once the intention of life becomes love. Rumi. As I mentioned earlier, humanity is currently transitioning into a metaphorical butterfly. In the caterpillar's world, the underlying intention to take what it wants at all costs made sense during that phase of its evolution. However, in this new phase of evolution on planet Earth, I believe it is becoming increasingly important that our intentions are positive and pure. Remember, compared to the destructive regime of the caterpillar, The butterfly's intentions are symbiotic with nature, constructive, not destructive. 
So if you want to know what the outcome of an action is going to be in the butterfly's world, look no further than the root intention. Is it love-centered or self-centered? Although selfish acts at the expense of others may have appeared to work in the past, in the love-centered world of the butterfly, those types of self-serving acts just won't fly. It is imperative moving forward that you act from a place of pure intention, considering the impact of all involved, knowing that what you put out will ultimately be reflected back. It all comes back to you. This realization was first driven home for me many years ago when my brother shared a lucid dream in which he felt he was visited by my dead grandmother. At the time, my brother and I had recently moved to California from the East Coast with dreams of making it big in the music biz with our band, Kundalini. So my brother decided the best use of his airtime with our deceased grandmother was to ask her what she foresaw becoming of our band. Her response? You are going to get out of it exactly what you put into it. Now, Kundalini never made it big, but why? What collective energies did the five band members put into it? Did our intentions come from a pure, love-centered place? Well, our intentions weren't bad, per se. One of my personal intentions when we formed Kundalini was to raise our listeners' consciousness through music, but if I'm being honest, the stronger group desire was for fame and fortune, which I'm sure you would agree is slightly less noble. Now, you may be thinking, sure, okay, but I don't think the 80s hair metal band Def Leppard's intention to get sugar incessantly poured on them was exactly the noblest of intentions either. But there are many factors at play when it comes to what we are attracting into our reality. It's also important to consider what the members of Def Leppard were putting out energetically to garner mainstream success. Perhaps as a group, they collectively had more faith they would be successful than we did, focused less on hitting the wall of failure, practiced more, etc. Besides, they may have accumulated wealth and fame, but there are many other forms of abundance as well. And who's to say their apparent success didn't come at the expense of the ultimate abundance, health and happiness? Now, none of this may have actually been the case, but my point is just to share a hypothetical example to highlight that there are many factors to consider when you are examining the results of any endeavor. And remember, times are shifting. Acts that elicited results in the 80s may have been less effective for my band as we were emerging on the scene in the early 2000s, as the world was further along in its transition to the butterfly stage. The Ultimate Intention To add to the complexity of factors to consider, there is a natural ebb and flow of intention inherent in nature that is the underlying current of creation. We have control over our intention at a personal level, which can impact the intention at a societal level, but there is also the ultimate intention, which comes from source, God, creator, higher self, the universe. Since we live in a free will universe, we can set whatever individual intention we want, but if it is not aligned with the intention of your higher self or the universe, the results you get may be less than desirable. We've all heard the saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. But in this new phase of humanity's evolution, I would say the road to heaven is paved with aligned intentions. One of my favorite philosophers and teachers, Dr. Wayne Dyer, wrote an entire book dedicated to this subject called The Power of Intention. In it, he explains that intention is not as much something you do as it is an energy you're a part of. He suggests it is more about connecting to the all-pervading energetic force of pure intention in the universe that allows the act of creation to take place, or as I prefer to call it, the source consciousness that creates and animates all things. Not only do you emanate from this field of pure intention, but if you align yourself to it, your desires become fulfilled and you find yourself at peace. His book was originally inspired by Carlos Castaneda's perspective on intention. Castaneda stated, In the universe there is an unmeasurable and indescribable force, which those who live of the source call intention. Absolutely everything that exists in the entire cosmos is attached to intent by a connecting link. 
Sorcerers are not only concerned with understanding and explaining that connecting link, but they are especially concerned with cleansing it of the numbing effects brought about by all of the concerns of living at ordinary levels of consciousness. When he uses the word sorcerer, he is not referencing a wizard-type character out of a Harry Potter novel, but rather someone who lives of and is aligned with source. A sorcerer, if you will. As you align with the intention of your higher self, the ultimate intention of all intentions, experiencing incredible things such as manifesting your wildest dreams and miraculous healings are genuine possibilities and even probabilities. By cleansing your connection with Source, dreams that once felt impossible become inevitable. Or as Dr. Dyer puts it, I am realistic. I expect miracles. So in this new world we are collectively stepping into and creating with the power of intention, it is crucial to look at the intentions we are setting and aligning with. And as you begin to understand that we are all extensions of one another and everything that we see, the basis of all decisions naturally becomes anchored in the truth that all is literally one. It begins to become apparent that all deception is an act of self-deception a snake eating its own tail. Gandhi understood this when he said, if you want to find yourself, lose yourself in the service of others. Why does this sage wisdom hold true? Because there are no others. Whatever I do to another, I am doing to myself, and therefore I will ultimately feel the energetic repercussions of my actions. The prayer of St. Francis of Azizi, who lived in the 12th century, is one of the most beautiful intention-setting statements I have ever heard. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. I firmly believe if a person opts to adopt St. Francis's intention as their own, it is an extremely powerful yet simple formula for an abundant life. Instead of constantly chasing the carrot to get something more for ourselves, what if we finally stopped the chase and asked the question, how and where can I give more abundantly? If you attract what you put out, how can you give more of what you want to experience in your life? I believe the universe will always find a way to present us with opportunities to give to others what we want for ourselves in some way, shape, or form. This is the ironic, cosmic joke that the universe is constantly waiting for us to clue in on. When a divine opportunity to align your intentions with service presents itself, do it, do it, do it. This is how you energetically attract what you want back to yourself, because the truth of the matter is you are always doing it to yourself. I call this the good kind of selfish, the kind where everyone wins. As you become more proficient at focusing your flow to align your intentions with the ultimate intention of source and alchemizing the events and circumstances in your life into opportunities to sow mutually beneficial outcomes for all involved, you will find yourself gracefully and joyfully floating in the present moment more often and thoroughly enjoying whatever shows up. Because it is indeed true that as aspiring writer Nancy D'Souza has said, a heart with pure intentions will never lead you astray. The fifth key, BBB. Be here now, Ram Das. I have always found etymology, the study of the history and origin of words, fascinating. When you break words down, you often find their deeper meaning hidden in plain sight. I've noticed in some cases, a person's name appears to give you an indication of their character as well. For example, the former investment advisor, Bernie Madoff, 
burned everyone and made off with their money by orchestrating the biggest Ponzi scheme of all time. Or take the former New York congressman, Anthony Weiner, who fell from grace after he was exposed, pun intended, for being involved in multiple sexting incidents where he sent nude pictures of himself. The universe definitely has a sense of humor. I had to smile when I originally examined my own name and first uncovered the message the universe apparently wanted me to discover. In the past, I often struggled to slow down and be present in the moment. My parents have told me that when I was a kid, it was nearly impossible to hold me. I would squirm until I got away because I had much more important things to do. My full name is Brandon Brent Beecham, initials BBB. However, it wasn't until I was well into adulthood that I realized how important it is to just BBB. The present is the gift. So in my own journey, as I continued to uncover the path to greater fulfillment and abundance, at some point it became apparent to me that the more I slowed down, was present, and could just be, the happier and more peaceful my life became. I believe there is a very good reason that two of the most popular transformational self-help books ever written are titled Be Here Now by Ram Dass and The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. They both speak to this essential key to BBB that helps unlock the abundance that is inherent in the present moment. Whenever we are focused in the past or future, we are doing so at the expense of the present And this is expensive indeed. And speaking of words holding a deeper meaning, I believe the present is called the present because it is the ultimate gift that we have been given. Too often we spend our time longing for the past or worried about the future, which is really just a poor use of our powerful imagination when you think about it. The reality is the future rarely comes exactly like we imagine it, And when we gaze into the past, we're often seen through rose-colored glasses. I'm sure many of you can relate to getting nostalgic for a past relationship and only remembering the good times, but filtering out the memories of how much it annoyed you when your former partner incessantly nagged you or kept you up all night snoring. Some 2,500 years ago, Lao Tzu, the great Chinese philosopher and reputed author of the Tao Te Ching, understood the importance of living in the present moment when he said, If you are depressed, you are living in the past. If you are anxious, you are living in the future. If you are at peace, you are living in the present. Important to note, he did not say, If you are happy, you are living in the present. He said, If you are at peace. Inevitably, there will be times when you are not particularly happy, But by applying the proper perspective, you can alchemize those challenging moments by choosing to be at peace regardless of what is transpiring. The truth of the matter is, we can deal with anything that is happening in the now if we choose to be fully present. If you're ever worried about the future, I would encourage you to recall how rarely your greatest fears have actually come to pass. Your personal history is a testament to the fact that even when something challenging does emerge, you have always been able to get through it. So if you don't prefer your circumstances in a given moment, you can always find comfort in knowing that this too shall pass. As the Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, change is the only constant. However, on the flip side of the coin, be aware that this is true of the good things in life as well. This is another reason to be present in every moment and appreciate the people and things we love because change is inevitable and the moments we hold dear will eventually pass too. The good news is the infinitely abundant universe can usher in unlimited new gifts on the winds of change, especially if we are vigilant about remaining in the present so that we are sure not to miss them. Now and not later. The importance of being present in the moment ultimately becomes even more clear as we begin to see that there actually is no past or future, there is only now. Both Das and Tolle reference this truth in their books that now truly is all that exists and therefore where all of our power lies. And as discussed earlier, 
Einstein's theory of relativity demonstrates time is actually dynamic, as opposed to static, and so, in actuality, our experience of time as linear is an illusion. One of my favorite philosophers, Alan Watts, eloquently explained how the now is all there is, and how eternity is synonymous with each and every now moment when he said, You are this universe, and you are creating it at every moment. Because you see, it starts now. It didn't begin in the past. There was no past. If the universe began in the past, when that happened, it was now. But it is still now, and the universe is still beginning now, and it's trailing off like the wake of a ship from now, and as the wake of the ship fades out, so does the past. You can look back there to explain things, but the explanation disappears. You'll never find it there. Things are not explained by the past. They are explained by what happens now. That creates the past, and it begins here. So when you begin to understand there is only now, then the past and the future have less of an impact on the present moment. Or as Watts also said, the wake doesn't drive the ship any more than the tail wags the dog. So anytime we are overly focused on our past actions or future possibilities, we are actually giving our ability to affect true and powerful change away to an illusion. I once made a watch that just said, now, on the face. To this day, it is the most accurate watch I have ever seen. Your past doesn't dictate who you can be unless you decide to drag it forward with you. In actuality, we are born anew in each new now. Our powerful cause to produce effects always lies in the now. And luckily for us, there is an infinite abundance of now moments. So as we begin to shift our focus away from a time-based perspective of reality, and the realization begins to settle in that there is no past or future, and we are all floating in the eternal now, we are freed up to experience the abundance of the present moment as the gift that it truly is. Consider the time-shattering notion that a billion Earth years ago, you were somewhere experiencing a different now. And in a billion Earth years, in what we call the future, you will be in another now moment somewhere else. To take it a step further, since time is actually an illusion, consider the notion that both of those past and future moments are actually happening in this eternal now moment as well. To make it a little easier to wrap your brain around, think of it like your fifth birthday party is playing out at this very moment on another channel that you just aren't tuned into. The same way you can only hear the radio station you are tuned into, even though many others are simultaneously playing on other channels. Celebrate good times. It's time we stop the insane modern-day trend of dancing with the intention of getting to a certain spot on the dance floor, or listening to the song of our lives with the intention of getting to the last note. Instead, I implore you to celebrate every note in the song, trusting and knowing that you will always be at the exact spot on the floor that is in your highest interest. You always have exactly what you need most in every moment, however it presents itself. Fully experiencing wherever you are in your life's journey at every moment is the ultimate goal and the path to unlocking your true potential. You, my friend, have officially arrived at the chapter of your life where it is time to stop chasing fulfillment. Now is the timeless moment for you to be, be, be and allow fulfillment to flow to you and through you. Now is the time for you to stop playing small because you finally realize this moment is as divine as any moment ever has been or will be and you are ready for life to take on a new golden shimmer. It is your destiny to realize that being fully present is where all the treasures of abundance await to be discovered, and being present in the now naturally leads to greater trust in the unfolding of your life. All right, everyone, that concludes today's reading from The Golden Key, Modern Alchemy to Unlock Infinite Abundance. Hope you have enjoyed be sure and go to the link in the show notes to join uh, the 
Facebook, the private Facebook group, the Golden Game Key Masters, where we'll be participating in some abundance manifestation exercises collectively, and supporting one another on that journey. And also remember, you can get the book, your own copy of the audio or ebook at goldenkey.gift using the code positive head. Uh, you'll get the audio or ebook uh, for free. Otherwise, until next time, journey well. Love you so, so much.